All right. Uh, this hearing is now called, uh, this public hearing is now called the order. This hearing is being held as required by the provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the German Laws of the Commonwealth, an act relative to the protection of wetlands, as most recently amended in Article 3.31, wetlands protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. Uh, today's date, December 22nd, 2021, time is 7.03. And uh, I think that covers all the official stuff right there. Yeah, so, um, so Larry, you'll need to, uh, oh my, why do I keep calling you Larry? I am so sorry, Leroy, I know your name. Um, you'll have to read that before each hearing opens, okay? Um, okay. And then th when, when that's perfect, you just need to read it before each hearing opens. And then um, the, the statement um, on the agenda for each of them, um, which is the, address applicant name um and if you need me to open that up i can for you um, for some reason my remote computer is not letting me in so that's why i'm feeling a little um, um sure of what's going on if it's something with the town hall computer or what all right uh first up is comments for me i've got nothing big except the wish on a well in the new spot i'm sure she'll be fine uh and then comments from staff. Uh, was David going to be with us tonight? You said he might be back up for you. Um, he is supposed to be here. Right. Do we have to do, sorry, do we have to do attendance? I can't remember. I'm, my brain is ex <laughs> exited my body, y'all. Did you say attendance? Yeah, yeah do we have don't, to like, don't do that. No, I don't think so. I'm thinking I'm of my other. Uh, sorry, we have to do it in my other one, and I was like thrown off here. All right, I'm I'm back with you. I'm with you. Thanks, Laura and Fletcher. <laughs> um, so looking for Dave. Not yet. Maybe later. Aaron, any comments from you? Um. Yes. And forgive me because I, for some reason, I'm having trouble getting into my remote computer. Um, and I was just in here, so I don't know why it's a problem, but I'm, I'm working on getting in right now. Um, That's all right. If you need a couple of minutes, did everybody get a chance to look at minutes? Maybe we can pass a couple of those through. Sure. Yeah. All right. Uh, someone wants to move to approve the minutes. If they have the dates right in front of them, otherwise I can do it. Um, I'm happy to, oops, <clears throat> I'll approve the minutes of, um, um, I forget, I forget, um, there's a couple of, yeah, you, you know what, there. let's, let's, um, it, it doesn't matter if you were there or not, um, oh. <laughs> let's, let Great. me just, it's, I think, I think my computer's opening right now and I've got the PowerPoint so I can help you guys out. Just yeah, give me so literally 30 seconds. I've got it up. I can, I can make the motion. Yeah. Okay. Uh, so uh, can I do them as a slate, Aaron, or do I have to go one by one? Um, so, I'll go one by one. All right. So, uh, yeah, motion well, to approve, <laughs> approve the minutes of February 12th, 2020. Second. Right. Thank you. All right, voice for it. Uh, voice vote, Fletcher. Aye. Laura. Aye. Anna. Aye. And I for me, so pass. Aye. I move. And Michelle. Great. Um, I move we approve the oh, minutes. I'm so sorry, Michelle. I, I, you <laughs> just weren't on my list. I'm an I. <laughs> uh, and uh, Michelle. Aye. Yeah, okay. Aye. Now, so I'm sorry. <laughs> uh, I move we approve the minutes of 9 22 2021. Second. Uh, second, we'll go with Michelle on that one because I feel bad. Uh, <laughs> voice vote, Michelle, for a second. Aye. Anna? Aye. Laura? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. And I for me? Uh, move we approve the minutes of 10 13 2021. Second. Second. <laughs> um, voice vote, Anna? Aye. Michelle? Aye. Laura. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. And aye for me. Second to last. Uh, I approve, I mo move we approve the minutes of 11 10 2021. Second. Second to Laura there. Uh, voice vote Fletcher. Aye. And Laura. Aye. Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. 
And I for me as well. And last, I move we approve the minutes of 12 8 21. Second. Second. <laughs> Second. Laura there. Uh, voice vote Fletcher. Aye. Laura? Aye. Michelle? Aye. And Autumn? Aye. Aye for me as well. So moved on all of them. All right. So yeah, Aaron, I didn't want to skip over you earlier. Do you have some comments you want to say? Um, so Dave, I don't see if Dave's on the call yet. Um, I don't see him there. Um, the one comment I have is that on our agenda, there's two items. Um, there's accepting a gift of open space, which I, Dave would be speaking to. And there's also um, a request for certificate of compliance for the same subdivision, which is the Vista Terrace subdivision. And there's three orders of conditions on that. Um, the commission can you know, proceed how they'd like to. Um, I'll show you kind of what, um, so this is the request, the request for certificate of compliance for e this. There's, there's three DEP file numbers. Um, I would actually recommend that we that we move on the first two, which are um, sorry, it's moving. It's it's these two. Um, the last one I would recommend that we wait on. Um, I'm in conversations with Tom Reedy because I did an inspection today, and the site there's two unstable lots, um, and there's some missing maintenance logs. So I have to actually. Um, make sure those lots are stabilized and get the maintenance logs before we can proceed on actually um, issuing the certificate of compliance on those. The first two, um, th the first one was um, a denial and there was, so the work never commenced associated with that. The second one, the work also never commenced. It was during the economic downturn. Um, and so anyways, so we can move on those first two um, certificates, but the, the final one I would ask for a, that we table that until um, we get more information from the applicant. I can make the motion, Aaron, if you want, unless there's questions. Yeah, anybody have any questions on that? All right, well, we're go for it. Okay, um, uh, moving to issue a certificate of compliance for 089-0527. Um, for invalid order of conditions because the order of conditions were never, you know, commercial, the, it lapsed. Second. Second, the Fletcher voice vote, Anna? Aye. Hi, Michelle? Aye. Laura? Aye. Sorry, I keep getting you while you're drinking. Uh, Fletcher? Aye. And I for me as well. We'll All take right. this one too. Um, move to issue a certificate of compliance for 0989-074 for invalid, invalid order of conditions because the order of conditions never commenced. Second. Second to Fletcher, voice for Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Laura. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Aye for me as well. Wow, you guys are flying tonight. I can't even keep up with you. This is great. Okay. <laughs> um, okay, so we're still waiting on Dave. Um, yeah, so I'll give you guys a couple updates. Um, uh, still monitoring Southeast Commons regularly. The Kestrel Land Trust culvert failure. Um, stay tuned on that. We might be having an emergency certification for that. I'm still um getting some information from um, engineers on uh culvert failed culvert on the kestrel land trust driveway which is also our emergency access for the um plumbrook pond slash epstein pond and um there are some issues because there's high flows right now and the driveway has sinkholes in it they put a steel plate over it so that it doesn't collapse um but it's it's a pretty serious safety issue. And so um, it might be an emergency certification. It might be a notice of intent in the very near future, but um, stay tuned on that one. I'll give you an update at the next meeting. Um, working on dam inspections, uh, did a dam inspection at Epstein uh, this week. And uh, that might 
tie into our emergency certification because there might be some weir boards that need replacing in the outlet structure for the dam and then um, did an inspection at the Markert's Pond Dam. I don't know if you guys recall, we issued an emergency certification out there for some washout that had occurred. And um, I brought an, um, an engineer out there to have a look at it, to try to give us some ideas for kind of an alternatives analysis of other things we could do to try to improve the situation. Cause it seems like it's happening um, on an annual basis, the damage, the storm damage to the dam. So trying to come up with some alternative options that might help reduce that and, and reduce the impacts of the, the storm damage. It's, is there a, one of those alternative options like let the pond drain and take out the dam? I mean, I know the neighborhood would be yeah. extremely upset about that, but. Right, right. I mean, we've put yeah. in already a ton of time and money into this. Anyway, it's, I, yeah. just, I understand the politics behind it, but honestly, right. <laughs> like. Yeah, yeah. No, your point is definitely well taken. I've done dam removals before and they're very political um, when people like open water. Um, yeah. So I definitely hear you. Uh, I think all options are on the table. Um, however, I think there is strong opposition um, to removing it. So I, I'm, I'm hopeful that there might be a happy medium, um, but again, it, it also would require funding. So that's really the big elephant in the room is wh who's going to pay for what, and we need to figure that out first. Um, but uh, trying to see what we could do from minor adjustments to sort of middle of the road adjustments to more substantial adjustments um, that might um, address the situation and kind of give it more, more stability and um, um, sort of better equipped for the future as we see stronger storms and more frequent storms mm -hmm. um, because we don't want to have to have to be in there dumping trap rock every year um, as it gets washed out. Yeah, um, I, think, I think Fletcher's point is really valid though. So you know, I, you know, I, hopefully it's something that we'll be able to discuss when we have more information. Yeah. And I mean, as my, I mean, Dave isn't on the call right now, but I know, so, yeah, yeah, that's fine. But, and the land is under the conservation commission care, custody and control. So your voices are very, very important because you're the decision makers. So 100% um, agree with you. And uh, I want to um, make sure that we vet every decision that's made. Um, I, let me see, there was another, I got a complaint. Um, let me see if I could find the photos from it. And I'm not sure that I have them. Um, I, I feel like the, the last meeting of the year, I'm fumbling. Um, th there was a complaint um, of tree cutting on, I believe it's 1107 North Pleasant Street. It's right next to Simple Gifts Farm. There's a very small um, intermittent stream that flows under um, North Pleasant. I did go by and take some pictures, but there's some pretty substantial diameter trees that were cut along that little brook. Um, and so, there needs to be some sort of response action. Um, I was sort of wavering between an enforcement order and uh, a letter of some kind, like, you know, just t telling them they're, that they've committed a wetlands violation. But I wanted to get your, your perspective, um, your opinion on how to respond, just because this, is a, this was a very last minute one. Um, literally looked at it the complaint came in and I looked at it yesterday and I haven't yet had a chance to sort of formulate the best response strategy on it uh, but I would say probably five or six large diameter trees right on the bank of the intermittent stream um, Dave this is 1107 um, North Pleasant Street right next to Simple Gifts Farm I got a complaint of tree cutting um, and so just trying to formulate to the honors at all? So what's far? that have you spoken to the owners already so far? I have not. I have not made contact with them. I just took pictures yesterday. Um, 
and the house looks like it's unoccupied right now. I think it might be a student rental. It's so, definitely a rental unit. Yeah. yeah I, I have... saw, actually, I saw it yesterday too. I was like, did oh. you? Yeah. I should have called you. But looks like you're on it. <clears throat> well, I got the call. Um, yeah. I mean, I'm assuming that because it's not on the simple gift side, it's actually on that the butter side. Yep. Yeah. So yeah. I'll be reaching out to the owners. I guess it's more do we want to just issue an enforcement order right off the bat um, or issue a letter asking them to do some replanting? I think maybe just first have a conversation. Okay. Yeah, and we have to start with a conversation. Or if they're you know unavailable, we can send out a letter, but just tell them to, that they must stop, obviously. Uh, Fletcher, Aaron, you both been out there or seen it at least. Any sense of what was going on? Maybe they were already leaning and they felt like they should take them down? Or... The trees were really close to the house. Uh, um, and that was kind of my thought was that maybe they thought that they were hazardous, um, maybe branches falling. But I mean, they're right on the bank of the, the stream. So and right they, on the road and right it's on the like road right there. Yeah. Somebody should have known better for sure. On that one. Some replantings. I think it's a good idea to just have a car, just what, whether it's a letter or, or I don't know who the um, owner is, but I think, yeah, just tape hey, and, you know, see what you did. Let's let them know what they did. And if we can get them to replant something, I think that'd be a good idea. Okay. Personally. Yeah, okay. Actually, I'm pretty comfortable with replanting too. If you want to start on that letter at some point, Aaron, does anyone else have any comments or feel pretty good about that? Or? That sounds good. I, I think that sounds good. I just, um, be, if it is a rental, I think we maybe we have to have more maybe stringent or I don't know, conditions about monitoring it or just making sure that, you know, they're not chopped down for like a backyard bonfire or I don't you know, there can be some absentee land ownerships with that area um, next to campus. So just something that sort of acknowledges that they will take care of it if they're not necessarily a homeowner. I think that's a very wise point, actually. Uh, how would we go about something like that, Aaron? Because I know there's not a lot of time, obviously, in the staff. Should we put it on the drive yeah. well like just keep an eye on or we could all you know it's pretty open area we all drive by there i mean we could require them to file an after the fact request for determination um if they had come to us with that with a request to cut that those trees down that's exactly what i would have asked them to file anyways um so filing one after the fact seems like a logical thing to me and then we would have three years of um, if the permit would be valid for three years. So if we required required replantings, then it would give us an opportunity to monitor that they were actually doing them. So that's an option. Uh, seems pretty reasonable to me. Uh, anybody yeah, else? On that? Just making sure the trees are still there after three years and like doing okay in their cages or whatever. Um, just, you know, if it's a college rental, who the heck knows, like what kind of oversight is happening at that property. Well, so, I mean, that was my question was just making sure that we are at, like the crossover between like rental registrations and everything else. I don't know how, how these violations impact that, but, you know, it's important that the, the property owner know and is, is passing that along. And, and maybe this is a question for Dave about like, is there overlap between um, sort of violations say. for, yeah, violations for CONCOM and things like rental registration. Um, is there that overlap or not really? I think the short answer is no, there's not really overlap, but we should have all of their contact information on right. file for both the owner and the, and the property manager. So Aaron, that's something you could easily get from the second floor um, and they have phone numbers. So I think, I don't know, I'm sorry, I missed the, um, um, I have a new laptop and I, for 12 minutes or whatever, 15 minutes, I've been trying to connect with you guys and I could not get on, but um, um, we certainly should be able to make a phone call as opposed to a letter or an email mm -hmm. and say, what's going on here? You made a mistake. Mm -hmm. So I think being in touch with Kathy on the second floor of town hall and, and getting that rental registration information could kind of cut to the chase on stop too because I, I don't know as we know that are they planning to cut more trees i don't know mm -hmm. so but let's get information as quickly as possible from the owner or about the owner and contact information and 
and get word out to them. We have all their emails as well. Okay. Well, it sounds like across the board, Aaron, we definitely want to reach out and make contact, preferably by phone with these owners sooner than later, just to tell them to stop. Um, as far as what to do about it, looks like we're all in agreement and we'll be asking for an after the fact RDA with replanting uh, that would give us three years to make sure it's actually in. Um, is everybody feeling good about that? Mm -hmm. All right. Kind of wait, just make sure I'm not missing Laura, but looks like we're good there. So go for it, Aaron. Um, so I would defer to Dave so that he has a chance because I know um, that yeah. th there was the the Vista Terrace uh, gift of land, and I don't know if we're held up on that, Dave. I don't know if you saw the emails between me and Tom. Yeah, I did respond an hour ago or something. I, I think we can oh. wait on that. It's not a not a big deal. Um, okay. I don't know if you could share the plan though, just so I could refresh the commission members uh, memory on this. This is a, a gift of land off of Vista Terrace, which is a new subdivision road um, off of 116, kind of near the double roundabout uh, in South Amherst. And we negotiated a deal with, with the, the current owner of the subdivision for I think there are seven new homes and I believe a donation of five to six acres. Um, so here is Vista Terrace. The lower part of your screen is 116 on the right is going up over the notch. And this is a new subdivision um, uh, going, going off to the east. This, this abuts the conservation land that we purchased from the Epstein uh, family. And the um, the old trolley line that goes up over the over the Mount Holyoke Range. So the goal here was to purchase, and maybe Aaron, you're controlling the the cursor, so you could just highlight, if you will, or or, or outline the open space. And I can't read that, but I think it's about six acres. Is that right, Aaron? You might be able to see that better than I can. Um, I. Um, five point something. Five point three nine. Yeah. There we go. 5.39 acres. And um, the goal here is to accept that as conservation land. And then we would we would make a connection to the Mount Holyoke Range and the, the trolley line trail uh, so that we, we would also have an additional parking area here, a small parking area for maybe four to six cars. Um, and with this deeded fee interest land would come an easement over Vista Terrace for the public to pass and repass. Uh, in cars, bicycles, or on foot, so that, um, yeah, it'd be a nice little uh, way for people to, again, access the Mount Holyoke Range and the, the new um, uh, pond at Epstein uh, at Sweet Alice Conservation Area, and so I don't think we're quite ready for prime time here. I was hoping to get some documents um, from the, from our town attorney, and those did not arrive, so, but again, this is Something that's been in the works for probably five years is my guess. So we'll get it done in January. Mm -hmm. And I think Aaron, you you were out at the site and determined what that there were some issues with the. Yeah, um, I'll show you guys the pictures. Um, bear with me for just a second. Um, there's stability issues out there. Um, this is a picture beside today after the rain beside the parking area. It's kind of washing away um, mm -hmm. the the mulch that they spread, and there's there's problems with um, um, gullies being formed in the in the runoff. Um, I also noticed that there's a I mean there's a there's a house lot um, on one side that's also unstable and then the house lot on the other side it's kind of hard to see but down in this area they're having an erosion problem and it looks like they put some hay bales in there to try to um, address it but it um, that should be corrected before we issue a certificate of compliance on it um, so you'll work with their attorney to get that that corrected yeah, the yeah. markers are put up, um, the wetland markers, that's the, the blue posts with the, uh, or the, the wooden posts with the blue marker on the top. Um, the stormwater structures looked like they were in great shape. Um, 
there was though and I don't this isn't I believe even I'm not sure the proximity of this to the to the wetland but there is some problem it looks like there's people accessing down to the Epstein slash Sweet Alice property um, on this little trail area that connects down to the trolley line and it's it's really unstable um, so anyways there's just some issues there that they that need to be addressed um, and then they're missing maintenance logs um, as well which mm. uh, I'd like to get in hand just to show they've been maintaining the stormwater structures. So I think I think if Aaron, you can work on those issues and then we can get this teed up for this, the first meeting in January or the second meeting in January for the for the gift. It does have to go through the town council. The town council has to accept the gift as well. So there's a little process here. Um, most of the erosion issues I think are probably not on the parcel that we're talking about. Um, that last trail that Aaron showed a, an image of is kind of a bootleg trail that I don't think there's going to be a lot that we can do about it. It's not a trail that we we planned or or developed or worked on. So is, is that trail it, on on the property that will be gifted to us or is that outside of no, it? Outside no. of it. Okay. okay. Yeah. Is there any way to create a trail on the property that's been gifted to us? Oh, we are. We're planning okay. to, to make that trail connection in 22. Got it. Um, to re redirect footpath? Yeah, I don't, you, you know, the the desire, the, the desire path, the desire line from the neighborhood will still be where Aaron showed it, sure. which sure. is the shortest path, but yeah. the public will be discouraged from using that. Um, there'll gotcha. be no parking down that end of the cul-de-sac. It's not even a cul-de-sac, it's a dead end. There, there's no turnaround down there. So the public will be directed to park on our land in our parking lot and there will be no street parking. And then uh, we will develop a trail that will need to be permitted through you because there are some uh, resource areas that we need to go through. There's an old uh, farm road, woods road that we will stay on, but there's a culvert we need to go over and yeah, some some redevelopment of that, um, of that old uh, woods road so we'll, or farm road. So we'll work with you on that in 22. Is um, the town parcel is going to be, I saw there's two open space parcels, one on each side of the road. Is the town one just going to be on the east side or the west side also? Uh, the town, the only thing we're accepting is on the south side of the road because the, the Vista Terrace goes almost due east-west. We're not accepting anything on the north side of the yes. road. I think. Looking at the map on the left, so there is an open space part on the on the left. I think that'll left. remain subdivision open space, so that'll remain with the association. I think they have an association uh, at Vista Terrace, but we, I don't think I'm, I've really gotten out of the practice of accepting tiny little parcels that we then have to maintain and trees fall and issues arise on those little parcels. It, it certainly. 20 years ago, we accepted a lot of those little parcels and now they're coming back to haunt us. So I try to avoid that's, was, that's sort of what I was getting at. So yeah. I'm glad we're going with the big connected one. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. Thank you. Uh, overall, sounds like a great project and we're in no rush and that there is a couple headwinds, including town council. So maybe we should put this on the second meeting in January. Does that sound good? Yeah, I mean, um, it's not a public hearing, so it, no. we'll see what the, you know, if if everything is ready for the first meeting, then great. If not, then um, we'll, you know, I'll, I'll kind of go with the flow and see when everything is, when the information from town council is ready and when um, they've stabilized the lots. Um, it's tough this time of year honestly, to, to issue a certificate of compliance when there's not vegetation established on a lot. Um, I told them they're either going to have to lay down turf or put down erosion control blankets, um, but we'll see what they come up with, and I'll keep you guys posted. Sounds good. Anything else from you, Dave? Um, can I just follow up with that just quickly, Erin? So in December, the idea of laying down turf are you talking about this time of year putting down what what would they do what would be a, a 
a reasonable well, usually if a site is this level of unstable, I mean, it's poorly drained soils where they're getting rills and gullies in it like that. Mm -hmm. um, even if they do put down mulch hay, it's just going to wash away. So mm -hmm. um, the only way to really protect the soil is to either put down an erosion, a staked erosion control blanket with seed. And again, the seed's not going to take until the spring. That would be the best option in my opinion, but they could also lay down turf. Now, you know, I hear what you're saying, like with it being cold, but we've had three days ago, a 65 degree day. So it's like, you know, it's tough to tell what the weather's doing. Um, and again, I doubt that because of the cost that they would go that route. Mm -hmm. um, but I have seen, I have seen people do that in the winter and that, it has been successful and it stops the erosion. So, um, yeah, yeah. it's, no, there's just, not a lot of great options. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Keep me yeah, posted actually, on that. That I've seen it done, so it is possible, but it's, it's not the best solution for anybody ever. <laughs> yeah. Turf is a really nasty product to make turf is not not good well you can plant it in the winter <laughs> yes and you can just roll. i used to lay turf in california and it was not cool <laughs> yeah. yeah i mean the only i have i've seen it used in really tough cases where there's been too much water velocity to hold seed or to hold mulch and it's been very successful in some cases but i agree 100 percent with everything everyone's saying it's like they're asking me what's the solution and i'm like well there's really not a whole lot of options um so, mm -hmm. and the focus would be on those areas that are eroding, because in terms of square footage, there's a lot of there's a lot of square footage out there to cover. So we're not suggesting they cover all of the all of the all of the soil, all of the you know all of the the lots with. I'm just kind of probing a little bit. What. What would, are you suggesting they cover all of that lot with something? Well, the commission, I mean, I've never seen a commission issue a certificate of compliance on an unstable lot um, mm -hmm. in a jurisdictional area before. Um, I think that the hundred foot buffer cuts through this location because the, the wetland marker is like just just back behind this um, uh, silt fence, but I, we'd have to take a look at the plan and see exactly where it fell. Um, hmm. But stuff in the buffer zone should be should be stabilized with yeah. with something. Yeah. Um, if it's outside of the buffer and they want to try to you know reseed it and stuff, I mean I I guess that's in the commission's discretion um, as to whether you know they would consider that if there are areas outside of our jurisdiction that are unstable. Um, yeah, it's interesting. I thought there was more, I think a lot of their, they seeded very late and it looks like a lot of it just died um, because I think a lot of that was seeded and I think they probably just got not a lot of germination late in the season and it just died quickly. But yeah. Yeah, I don't know if they brought in topsoil either. They may have, but um, oh, I think some, they did. They had a oh, huge, did they? They had a huge pile of topsoil out there. Oh, okay. The spread. Yeah, but anyway, I don't mean to belabor this this one issue, but we'll work on it between meetings. So, um, Leroy, you asked me if there's anything else. The only other thing I just um, um, I'm, I apologize for being late. Had connectivity issues here at home, but um. I did provide the commission with some of the correspondence with the DCR and um, regarding the Bay Road parking lot, the materials that I submitted and then their response, which I think was generally favorable uh, to obviously keeping that parking lot. Um, the one thing we do have some follow up items from that situation. One is that we need to in the spring discontinue the roadside parking along Bay Road. So I'm gonna work with DPW on that. Um, how we do that will be interesting and, and we'll figure that out, whether we use boulders, a combination of boulders and signs, we'll see. I'll work with the superintendent of public works on that. And then the other piece is we do need to 
work with our IT department to make sure that our uh, GIS maps and, and layers are up to date because unfortunately, and again, and I'm not blaming IT, this is really on me um, because I knew about the CR out there. I just had not committed to memory exactly where that CR uh, covered, but um, uh, work with our IT department to make sure our, our layers are up to date with regard to CRs held by the state or and or Kestrel Trust or any other um, ent uh, bodies, any other um, organizations. So I think those were kind of the takeaways in talking with DCR. They want to make sure, you know, obviously that those are corrected. So happy to take any questions on that if you have any. This isn't a question, but I was just out there the other day, Dave, and the uh, I don't know if it was you or Kestrel, but the footprints and the tracks on the road are awesome. That's such a great touch. And it was so helpful because for a minute I was like, I'm definitely, I've been here before, but I'm walking up someone's driveway. Um, but the tracks that's, I hope those are going to stay. I don't know if it's possible. The tracks, or what. Yeah. I haven't been out there recently. I don't know. Did they enlarge them at all? Kestrel put those down. They were pretty small um, when I was out there. I don't know if they last. enlarged them, but there's a variety of animals and they yeah. are it, easy to follow. So we are, um, Aaron and I are working on a new map for that area, which should be done in January sometime. And then we will be adding our own signs. Um, I feel like Kestrel has done a great job at kind of um, branding some of that trail, but most of the land is actually town of Amherst. So um, we will be um, coming out with kind of our own signs with the town seal on them and, and kind of making sure that people know when you're on Kestrel land and when you're on town of Amherst land. Sounds good. Not that it's a competition. We collaborate with Kestrel, you but know, it do is like important. Little town of Amherst next to the turkey prints, like next to, yeah. It is important to know when you're on town land and that CPA dollars have gone to pres preserve the land, mm -hmm. et cetera, et cetera. So. Absolutely. All right. <coughs> uh, we have a couple of the uh, appointment things, which are exciting, but it is, I got 7.40, so should we go straight to hearings? Does that sound right now? Sure. Yeah, that, that sounds good. All right. So first hearing, and these are both new, right? Yes, both of them are being opened tonight. All right, so let's open this first one. Sharing is being held as required by provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the General Laws of the Commonwealth and Act Relative to the Protection of Wetlands, as most recently amended, and Article 3.31, Wetlands Protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. This is for an abbreviated notice of resource area delineation and read by the Berkshire Design Group for Zyblu. Zyblu? Out of the Cyblue Realty LLC. <laughs> it's uh, a tough for, one. Uh, for confirmation, the resource area boundaries at 398 and 406 North Hampton Road, uh, Map 13D, Lot 47, and Map 13D, Lot 48. Um, I see we've got a few people from the public here. So, just a quick reminder on how we do this. We are going to have a presentation um, of the applicant for about five minutes or so. Then we'll hear from staff that's Aaron for about five minutes, then commissioners. And finally, the public. Uh, we welcome all comments. Happy you're here, but please keep it to the subject matter we're talking about. And remember, we have to talk issues and not opinions. So, with that, do we have anybody from Berkshire Design here? I believe Rachel, I will promote her to a panelist and Jess, I believe as well. Jess. And if I got anybody wrong and they're not actually here for this project, I apologize. Yeah, I think I got Thank you. Welcome, Rachel. Welcome, Jess, maybe. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for your time. Um, we're here today uh, representing the owner of Zultitz, um, the two parcels, and we're here uh, seeking an ANRAD delineation confirmation. Uh, we, we anticipate coming back before you probably in, in the middle of winter when the snow's on the ground. So we wanted to be sure to have a chance for you guys to look at the wetland delineation um, and review it uh, prior to that. 
um, what you guys look at today will serve as basis for uh, future future thoughts about how our client uses the two parcels. Um, and Aaron, should I should I share my screen with the materials or? Um, if you would like to present, you're welcome to. Okay. Can you, can you all see my screen? Okay. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so the site is along Northampton Road um, adjacent to Greenleaves Drive. Um, there's a residential house on one parcel and then the garage on another. The site itself is about 70% developed uh, with impervious surfaces of building and, and road and paving. And the back portion of both parcels is vegetated. Um, and at the very back of the property is where the, where the wetlands are. Um, the vegetation on site is in that back area is significantly overgrown with invasive species. I think we noticed there's a, a ton of bittersweet um, and multi-floor rows. Uh, Ward Smith, our wetland scientist, was out there and he, he used both um, hydrology, well, he used hydrology, hydric soils, and vegetation to delineate the edge of the, of the wetland areas. Um, and I, I, I think that's it. Um, is there anything else that you guys want us to cover? Uh, that is pretty straightforward, I would say. But uh, Aaron, I guess you're up. Any words from you on this? Yeah, um, I'll just share my photos from the site. Um, I walked the site with um, Rachel, Jessica, and Ward. And it is a it's a real mess in terms of bitter oriental bitter, bittersweet on the on the site. It's pretty much taken over everything. Um, but everything was pretty um, there wasn't any uh, areas of the property that um, did I was I sharing that? Did you guys see it? Sorry, go back. I thought my, I was doing a share screen. Um, there wasn't any um, areas that seemed marginal or questionable about the delineation. Um, there was almost like a, almost a grass line um, up against most of it. And then a uh, parking area. Um, there was an area that was kind of wooded, but it was pretty obvious where the upland and wetland line was um, adjacent to that. There is a drainage going through there on either side. There's a culvert going to the um, Hawkins Meadow side, and then there's a culvert going to the um, green leaf side. So um, is a little uh, drainage swale intermittent stream that flows there. Um, and yeah, I didn't, I, in walking this site, I didn't have any issues with Ward's delineation at all. I did request data sheets just for the sake of having them because anytime we have an ANRAD, um, we've always had those submitted and I felt like it would be important for us to have just to document soils and plants in the wetland and upland areas. Um, the one, I guess, question I had was on the form A, um, it was blank with regard to the resource areas delineated and the linear feet of delineation. Um, and so I just figured I would check in on the fact that that, that detail is missing um, from the form. Um, usually we'll include uh, the resource and the amount of linear feet that was um, delineated. Hmm. I thought we had, I thought we had submitted that, so we can we can get that to you. That was we had discussions but, about that in our office. So. Was it it was it just BVW that you guys were looking for confirmation of, or were you looking for confirmation of bank as well? Just BVW. Just BVW. Okay. Yeah. So the the linear feet that we had the BVW. It was 242. Um, I have it on our. I just want to saw that number somewhere. 
Yeah, I have it on ours. Um, I can resubmit it. I don't know why it would have uh, went away, but um, yeah, I could resubmit it to you. I could um, email as you now. So. Okay. Yeah, that, that, I mean, it's, I have no problem with the delineation. Um, and I'll just, I just want to show that it was just blank on my form. Um, but um, I have no problem with the, uh, with the delineation itself. I think it was very straightforward um, and, and that's fine for us to include. Maybe if you just resubmit the, um, the revised form with the number on it and then that way we can issue. But I, I have no problem with um, approving. I just think that um, if we are going to be issuing the ANRAD tonight that we need to specify that um, we're issuing the ANRAD approving the, um, the boundary of bordering vegetated wetland only. Um, anybody opposed to that, limiting it to just PBW? All right. Uh, any other thoughts, opinions from commissioners at all? Questions? Again, seems pretty straightforward, but now we turn to the public. Anybody from the public have any comment on that? Uh, the idea here is that it should be a little icon where you can raise your hand if you have a question or comment. And it looks like no. So, uh, Aaron, I believe you have a draft motion for this one, right? Yes. I can take it. Yeah, let me just share my screen. Okay. Um, Moving to issue the ANRAD, approving the vegetated wetland only for 398 and 406 Northampton Road, uh, approving that the BTW, BT, BVW boundary is as delineated. Second. Uh, voice vote, Anna. Oh, Hi. Michelle. Fletcher. Aye. Uh, Laura. Aye. And I for me as well. All right. Where are our applicants? Uh, thank you, Rachel. Thank you, Jess. And have a good night. Happy thank holidays. you, guys. Happy holidays. All right. Next up. Learner Consulting, I believe. Yep, and I, I'll promote Erica to panelists. She's in the audience. Thank you. I'm sorry, Larner. Uh, this hearing is being held as required by provisions of Chapter 131, Section 40 of the German Laws of the Commo, an Act Relative to Protection of Wetlands, and as most recently amended, and Article 3.31, Wetland Protection under the Town of Amherst General Bylaws. Uh, this is a request for determination of applicability by uh, Learner Consulting for Amir Mikishi for selective thinning of trees and vegetation within one not within the I believe. Oh, what was it? I'm sorry. Oh, I'm sorry. I was, I was going to say Mikishi, I believe, um, uh, but I may is. also <laughs> not be doing him justice, to be honest. Fair enough. Uh, within the 100 foot buffer zone at 11 trillion way, uh, map 21D, lot 70. So obviously, Erica, you're here for them. Anybody else? Is that everybody? All right, so you just saw the same deal. We'll hear a presentation from you, and then we'll hear from Erica. Uh, and then commissions and so on. So, with that, uh, feel free to give us a little presentation on what you have going on here. Great, would you mind if I share my screen real quick? Absolutely not, go for it. Thank you. So my name is Erica Larner, um, Larner Consulting for Amir Mikshi. This shall be um, 11, tr tr sorry, 11 Trillium Way. Um, the majority of the house development is, to be, well, the entirety of the house development is to be outside of the 100 foot buffer. 
there is a small bit of clearing that was inside of the natural heritage priority habitat um, line. We did previously achieve about a year ago um, a determination of no take from natural heritage for this. Um, and I did the delineation at that same time. And there's an intermittent stream. Um, the intermittent stream and the BBW associated with it is where the endangered species is um, there, it's presumed habitat. So the, uh, the layer does go along with that particular stream. Um, this particular filing is asking for that we are able to clear up to the 50 foot boundary, which is the approximate edge of the um, property boundary with selective thinning of pine trees, leaving the oaks in place. Um, during the construction of the single family home, it is quite likely that a lot of the tall spindly pine trees will have a difficult time withstanding the winds and their exposure. Um, and we'd like to promote some of the hardwoods as opposed to some of the um, less likely to endure uh, pine trees. There are some hemlocks on the property as well. I do believe the um, applicant would be looking to remove a few of those as well um, up to the property boundary, which would be the 50 foot uh, buffer zone. I'm happy to answer any questions that anyone has. All right, uh, before we get to us, so we'll hear from Erin on this. Thank you, Erin. Of course. So um, I walked the site with Erica um, earlier this week, yesterday, I believe. Um, this is uh, facing the, this is standing in the outside of the buffer, actually looking into the buffer zone. And then turning around facing the road. And then this is actually um, at the property line looking down toward the intermittent stream um, on either side. And then let me see, this is facing out from the buffer um, toward the road. So it, there, there are quite a few oaks that are um, sprinkled in there and there's definitely some larger pines that are also in the stand as well. And um, let me just pull up my PowerPoint. Um, I think my only questions really were whether they were planning to stump um, the, the trees that were being removed and um, if there was going to be excavation up to the edge of that 50 foot boundary. Um, my understanding is that the intent would be a flush cut with no pulling of stumps. Um, that stump grinding could could be a potential option, but that the stump, that the actual pulling of stumps would not occur, that it would be a flush cut with potential for grinding, um, but no pulling of stumps. Um, we'd be quite happy to have some sort of erosion control if it made the commission more comfortable. That's a very easy solution. Um, uh, I, I also just want to comment that um, while we're out there, the, the slope that you saw that Aaron took the picture um, that really looked towards the resource area, the uh, flag to the left of the picture is really a great angle that the, um, the delineation for where the intermittent stream and the BBW was, there's a very clear break in slope. It's, um, it was not what I would call it is a difficult field investigation on my part. Yeah, the work is on sort of a plateau and then on the edge of the property line where the 50 foot buffer is, that's where the slope sort of starts to go down toward the, the stream. So you're saying you're gonna leave all the oaks in that, it's just taking out the white pine and some of the hemlock? Correct, the, the entire, foot. yeah, to leave all the hardwoods. Well, I, I believe hemlock might be considered a hardwood, but to take, to leave all the oaks and to selectively um, remove the evergreens. Um, there is some intent for Vista, and there is also some intent for protecting the house with the taller pine trees that may not withstand um, the alterations in the area. But no, we would only be selectively thinning up to the 50 foot, um, not a wholesale clearing, leaving the stumps in place and flush cut or stump grinding only. Erin, could I jump in? Is, is mm -hmm. I, I'm having kind of a flashback to maybe walking this site. Is this something that came up about a year ago where some of the neighbors concerned about the lot or clearing of that lot? Is that, is that jogging my memory? Yes, there was, mm -hmm. there was some cutting um, out there and we did get a complaint and I went mm -hmm. out and looked at it and the cutting at that point was, was outside of the 100 foot buffer. 
um, in like the spot where the sort of the house lot is proposed. Um, but I did reach out to Amir at that point and let him know um, that we had gotten the complaint. And I kind of inquired at that point. And then Erica gave me more information with regard to the delineation and the extent of um, CONCOM jurisdiction. So I think that that's what's prompting this uh, filing. Okay. Yeah, there, I'm, Leroy, there may be, you know, as you know, maybe a Butters who wanted to comment, and, and I'm sure you'll make time for that when appropriate, but thanks. What's the species mapped for that area? I apologize. Give me one moment, and I will look up the notate determination and find out for you. It's, it's on my computer. I just can't pull it out at this exact moment. Give me a sec. That's a good question, Michelle. I have a I have a guess, but may I ask, and I do not mean this in any way, shape, or form to be suggestive that the commission should not discuss this or to discuss their um, jurisdictional rights at all. But if we're not doing a notice and it's a privately owned parcel we're doing alterations on, should we publicly mention the um, species? Is that actually something I should introduce into the public record? Because it is usually maintained as a, an exemption from the public records specifically, so there's no alterations. I'm happy to provide it, but I believe it is one of those cases in which that if, I'm, if we were to be filing a notice of intent in which we would do a um, dual filing, um, that that would be an appropriate part of the record. I'm concerned about introducing things to the record that are not appropriate. I don't, I'm happy to do what the commission decides. Um, I just don't want to introduce uh, a, a named endangered species and put it at risk for a take when we're not um, within that jurisdiction. So please, I will happily look it up. Yeah, I just, it's, it's it's right. yeah, I mean, that's what Erica's that's saying is point. definitely yeah. legitimate. Um, if it's something that people would look to collect, um, Natural Heritage usually likes to keep it uh, private um, and only release it when it's necessary by to the owner the regulatory body um and that land behind the back there is also held um as part of the association um so it's also a privately held parcel as opposed to public land um so i i'm if if uh it would comfort the commission i'd be happy to send it via email for your private non-public records um that would be a solution i'd be quite comfortable with no i agree yeah, I think that that's, that would be fine. I can, if you send it to me, Eric, I can forward it to Michelle. I have a really small thing and, and I apologize if this is my error. Um, in the form that was submitted, uh, section B, the determinations, it does, it says Belchertown. Um, yeah, and I just want to mm -hmm. confirm that <laughs> I, I, I'm sure it was a typo or like an autofill, but just before it goes official, it would be great if that would say Amherst. <laughs> Yes, absolutely. My apologies. <laughs> no you worries. Correct, Anna. I figured it was an autofill. No problem. I just wanted to make sure that was mentioned. Yeah. Um, great. Thank you. And 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 Aaron, if you'd like me to be prior to any kind of issuances, I mean, obviously I'll be sending you the determination of no take with the information for Michelle. I can also make sure I resubmit the edited RDA that has the appropriate town listing. So your record is clear and accurate. I'd be quite happy to do that. That's, that's completely yes, fine. I appreciate that. Any other questions from any other commissioners or comments? All right, uh, turning to the public then. Uh, is, is there anyone here from the public uh, that has comment on this particular hearing? If anyone does have comments, you can raise your hand. Hmm. Oh, we got one at least. Hold on one second. All right, you should be able to talk. Come speak, I'm sorry. Hello? Hello. <laughs> Hi, uh, my name is Wei. So I actually, I live in uh, 15 train and Wei. So it's next to the uh, 11 train and Wei. So uh, my quick question is like, I just want to double check. It's like, uh, uh, so according to the uh, application, it's like, is only oak tree will be, uh, will be caved, right? That is correct. 
on small trees or pine trees is going to be cut down. According to the application, yes. Uh, okay. So the other thing is like because I saw the the property line on the backside is uh is just 50 uh 50 foot uh, 50 feet uh to the uh to the wetland, and then the the zone is going to be in between uh in between 50 uh, feet and 100 feet. Uh, so, yeah, so I just want to double check, like, uh, what's the uh, jurisdiction distance? Like, uh, is that legal to, to cut down a tree, uh, like, uh, within uh, 100 feet, uh, uh, within 100 feet distance, or uh, it has to be outside of uh, that uh, distance, like, uh, out of 100 feet? Oh, well, that is what we're here to determine, but I can be clear, up to 100 feet is within our jurisdiction. Uh, but yeah, that's what we're, we're gonna discuss right now. And right, so if, if somebody wants to cut a tree that's within Conservation Commission jurisdiction, so within 100 feet, they have to file a permit to do that with the Conservation Commission. And so that's why the applicant is here tonight. Oh, yeah. but, but, okay. but to yeah. answer your question, the commission can permit tree removal within 100 feet. Okay, because that's really my, my concern is because uh, uh, we share the same, uh, uh, the conservation land because uh, if uh, if uh, Amiel like uh, Amiel he gonna cut down over the tree and uh, maybe or gonna cut down over the pine trees maybe uh, I do have some concerns like it's gonna have some uh, uh, influence to my uh, to to all of my trees in my backyard because uh, really uh, we 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 moved to the property about five years ago and uh, we leave everything as it is. It's like we, we didn't cut down any trees no, yet. So uh, that's, uh, I, I don't know, like uh, the, 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 the main concern is like, uh, uh, like uh, in, in that way, like, uh, b because they do have, uh, you just mentioned like some species or, or like uh, they do have many animals live on, uh, on behind. Like we, we know like, uh, we know like there's some fox and uh, a black bear and this kind of stuff living in that area, so. <laughs> So uh, yeah, that, that's my uh, that's my uh, only concern. And the other thing is like, do you do, do you know like uh, what's the building size? Uh, Erica, do you know? Do you have an estimation or Rachel or what she left? So I, I know that it's the bookshelf uh, design company, right? Mm -hmm. Do you do you have an idea about Rachel's how? Rachel's actually the previous the previous hearing. Right? The mm -hmm. one we're dealing with here is just Erica. Okay. And, oh, yeah. and and through the chair, may may I address the question of the building size and share my screen again? Would that be okay? Absolutely. Feel free. Thank you. Let's go with. There we go. All right. So this would be the approximate concept plan. Um, as this particular project, sir, is the general, the main proportion of clearing is outside of the commission's jurisdiction, this underfoot buffer. The actual house size itself is not set in stone. We, we are looking at an approximately 2,400 square foot house um, with some small clearing um, with lawn into a priority habitat zone that the Natural Heritage and Endangered Species Program would say would not result in a take of endangered species. Um, and the clearing that would be selective to remove the pines would be in this area, and it would leave a 50 foot untouched buffer between there and the resource area. Um, in general, at the commission's discretion, they are welcome to um, permit well, their own regulations do regularly permit, but within discretion, they are welcome to permit um, building within 50 feet and clearing within 25 feet within the local bylaw. Um, so this particular project has been designed to try and provide the vista and the housing that the applicant would like, but to minimize some of the alterations in the buffer. Um, and if there's any other questions that I can address that help the abutter feel more comfortable, I'm happy to answer them the best I can. Yeah, it's, uh, it helps. Uh, yeah, it's just, uh, another quick question is like because uh, the 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 uh, I, I realized like there are twenty five inches uh, around right so to the to the property line uh, like I, I saw there was a driver here so it's like I just uh, want to make sure like uh, the 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 trees in between the driveways like the driveway and my property line is gonna be is gonna be caved or is gonna be removed also. 
But this is maybe not uh, about the wet line stuff. So. <laughs> It may not be, but it's actually something I can um, promote, discuss with the property owner that it's something that you'd like to preserve your privacy buffer. Am I accurate in thinking that yeah, exactly, on this yeah. particular map, you're to the left? Yeah, yes, yes. Yep, yep. Yeah. Um, it's not necessarily with the purview of this hearing, but I have no issue letting the owner know that you'd like to preserve your privacy buffer and you know let him know that to the best of his ability. I'm sure he'd like to be a good neighbor um, <laughs> for sure, from yeah. my interactions, and I'd be happy to convey that desire to him. Oh, okay, please. Yes, because uh, it's really so close. Like if you observe my property, uh, because I bought this house, I, I have no idea like my property is so close to the property line. So otherwise it's like, uh, if, if uh, if the owner cut down all the trees are uh, on the left side, so it's maybe push me to cut all my trees also. So. All right, Mr. Liu, I think we've got the most of your comments. Uh, I appreciate you coming. Okay. Uh, again, to be clear, it does sound like there will be some cutting within the hundred foot, and we can allow that. Um, it also sounds like Erica and the property owner are more than willing to work with you offline. That's not really part of this hearing, but you can absolutely feel free to make contact with them and discuss property lines and how much to cut and feel good or bad. Yes, we very hope like we can keep the tree as more as possible. So that's, that's the only concern, yeah. But thank you, uh, it's very clear. Thank you so much. Thank you, thank Erica, you. thank you, Aaron. Yeah. Is there anybody else from the public? that means to speak, Oops, sorry. All right, looks like no. Um, any more, any further follow-up questions from the commissioners? So, uh, just if the commission would like an erosion control barrier, um, feel comfortable with an erosion control barrier at the limit of tree clearing, or would you feel comfortable due to the extent of the development outside? I just wanted to include it as a condition if you wanted it or not. Um, I'm comfortable without it actually in this particular case. Anybody else have any thoughts? I think, yeah. I. Oh, is that on? I think. Sorry, I froze. I froze for a second. Oh. I don't know if I'm back. I'm going to reconnect. You're Sorry, back. You're good, Anna. Go ahead. We can hear yeah, you. Yeah, we can hear you. We can hear you. Um. Uh, well, Anna's reconnecting. I will opine and say that if they're just thinning trees. I'm more comfortable with not having an erosion barrier. Um, and I don't know how we control that. I mean, like, is there, there's an estimation of how many trees are going to be cut down or? Um, I mean, to me, it's more providing a limit of work. It just tells them where the boundary is so that it's very clear where that 50 foot boundary is. And then they know they can't go beyond that point. Um, I think sometimes having a line on the site yeah. can be useful for that reason. But would you say, Erin, that the consultant, I'd agree with Erin on that. It can prevent any potential violations accidentally. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. So, follow -up question, though. My, my question was, because it's a downward slope, Erin, um, are, are you, would you be more comfortable with an erosion barrier? I think that it would be really a good decision to have a 50, to have a, um, an erosion control boundary or even just a straw waddle laid out at the 50 foot. It just, okay. just so that they know, don't clear beyond this line. Yep. And um, okay. yeah. I think that sounds reasonable. But you're about to say something. No, I, I agree. That makes sense. And this place they have on board, so that makes it easy. Put it in. <laughs> So I would just recommend these two conditions, um, the erosion control inspection, and then come out after it's the work is done just to make sure that, um, that the area is stable prior to them pulling it. But it's really just more about identifying the limit of work. And Anna, it looks like Anna's back if she... Sorry, y'all, that yeah, new Salem yeah. Wi-Fi. Um, I'm out of town today. 
I, I agree. I, I heard what Laura asked and it was what I was gonna ask and that, um, so I got my answer. Excellent. Any other questions for Ms. Lauren? Or then we're looking for a motion. I'll make a motion. We good? I'll make a motion to for a negative determination of applicability under the Wetlands Protection Act, Box 3, and positive determination, Box 5, under the Town of Amherst Wetlands Protection Bylaw. And with the condition that we're going to put erosion controls in and uh, place the limit of work and inspect it prior to the start of work. And the area must be stable and inspected prior to removal of controls. Second. All right, voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Laura? Aye. Donna? Aye. Fletcher? Aye. And aye for me as well. So pass. Oh. Erica, Thank you, you Erica. Thank good? you very much. It was a pleasure, and I hope I get to see you folks again in the future. Thank Take you. Take care. Happy holiday. You as well. All right, actually, only the two hearings tonight, so that's done with that. But we're going to go backwards a bit <laughs> to CPA liaison. Who did someone, you emailed me somebody was interested. Who was it? That would be me. Oh, but Laura, you're interested still? I, <laughs> yeah. I talked, right. Dave, I, talked Dave, I talked to Dave this morning at 9 a.m., so I'm still <laughs> <laughs> Excellent. Uh, anybody opposed to Laura taking the position? Is there Fletcher? anyone else interested? So if someone else really wants to do it, I don't want to step on any heels. I move we appoint Laura. Uh, Laura, I'm going to say it wrong, but I'm going to do my best. Laura Pagliarulo. Nice job. Yeah? Yes. Yeah. To the Community Preservation Act Committee as the Conservation Commission liaison. Second. Nice, uh, Laura. Yeah. Then, uh, Fletcher. Aye. Uh, Anna. Aye. Michelle. I didn't hear you. Uh, aye. For me. And can Laura vote on this one? Laura says aye if she's allowed to vote. <laughs> sure. All right. There you go. Uh, second one is for the bylaw review subcommittee. I believe it's going to be me and Michelle, if everyone's all right with that. Michelle, still interested? Maybe. We can't I, hear I, you, Michelle. I, yes, I am. <laughs> <laughs> to move to appoint Michelle Lab, Lab, Lab. LeBay. LeBay, oh man, that was so bad. You got mine so well. Move to appoint Michelle LeBay. Do we need another person here? Leroy. And oh, and Leroy. Leroy. Uh, to the bylaw review committee. Second. Second. Yeah. Uh -huh. you, got you got it. <laughs> you deserve it. Thanks. I did nothing to deserve it. <laughs> Come on. Just take just take the compliments. All right. All right. Yeah, yeah. it's your last night. Take it off. Yeah. It's yeah. Uh, voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Anna. Aye. Uh, Laura. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. And I for me. Uh, I'm so excited for y'all to do that too. That's going to be great. I'm excited, but I'm a <laughs> <laughs> I'm going all the way down there. I think we're back to other business, unless I missed anything at the top, Aaron. No, no. Uh, that is everything that I have for tonight, actually. Um, so I've got these certificates of compliance, the last one for Vista Terrace, we're going to hold on, right? Correct. Yep. And then I've got one on the sheet here, emergency cert to, for something. Um, there was there. Um, that was just sort of a placeholder in case. Well, what am I doing? That was a placeholder in case uh, um we ended up having one, but we we do, we don't have any emergency certifications tonight. Good day. So all right, that's it. Uh, if anybody has nothing else, then uh, we'll move to close. Happy Thank you, Anna.
Yeah. Uh, thank you so much. Pleasure, it's been amazing. Thank you. You've done such a great job and good luck with. Now you're moving to like council. a high level government position. <laughs> I'm just going to accept all the conservation land, y'all. Bring it on. <laughs> Except the small parcels. Right, Except Dave? the small parcels that don't actually yeah. help us. Yeah, so you're yeah, right. Strategically. <laughs> all right. Thank you all so much, truly. It's like this has been one of the best experiences, and I've learned an incredible amount. So thank you. Yeah. Thank you. All right. Yeah. Are we good? Should I do it? Yeah. Yeah. Or do you want to do it? Uh, I'll do. Okay, I'll do. Okay. Yeah, All right. Yeah, I I, uh, I move. I move. We adjourn at eight eighteen p.m. A record. I second. <laughs> it is a record. It is totally a record. Yeah. Voice vote, Michelle. Aye. Alda. Aye. Laura. Aye. Fletcher. Aye. Aye for me. Uh, and another close, but another great year with all of you, and happy holidays and all that. Stay Likewise. safe. Ice coming. Cold weather coming. Stay safe. Be happy. Get out on all of what Leroy just said. I love it. <laughs> Aaron sex yes. that. Yes. Very bumbly, apparently. Just right. happy holidays and enjoy. Yeah. All right. Bye, everybody. Bye, guys. Bye, Have a great take care, night. everyone. Have a good Bye. See you next Bye. year. Bye. Yeah. <laughs>